Is atherosclerosis an infectious disease? Will we treat patients affected by atherosclerosis with vaccination in the future or even with low-dose uh, cytostatic drugs? Very difficult question, but by the same time, very, very interesting. And we have here in uh, the studio in Davos, Switzerland, Peter Libby from the Brigham Women's Hospital and uh, the Mass General in, in Boston. Peter, welcome to discuss with us the current role and the future perspective of anti-inflammatory therapy in the field of atherosclerosis. Setting the stage, what is the role of anti-inflammatory treatment? What, is, what about the idea in the field of atherosclerosis, Peter? Well, you know, my colleagues uh, here in Europe and worldwide have indulged me over the last 20 years as I've uh, been exploring the role of inflammation and immunity as a possible pathogenic pathway in atherosclerosis. And indeed, uh, there are now many people working in this field. And we have, uh, as a community, generated sufficient evidence based on our in vitro experiments in the laboratory and animal experiments and observations with biomarkers in humans that really convince us that inflammation is an important part of the pathogenesis of atherosclerosis at all phases, from the initiation through the uh, chronic long incubation phase of progression and up to and including the thrombotic complications. And that, of course, doesn't demote any of the traditional risk factors such as cholesterol or hypertension and the like, but it gives us a way to understand how those traditional risk factors get transduced into altered behavior of the artery wall and its cells that give rise to the disease and its complications. So you and your colleagues, uh, being the experts in the field of inflammation and cardiovascular disease, you have taken a significant step from the laboratory into large-scale clinical trials to, to prove or disprove the relation between inflammation and uh, atherosclerosis. What patient population are you currently looking at and what are the, uh, the treatment uh, that you're exploring in that study? Well, you uh, certainly hit the nail on the head. After several decades of exploration in the laboratory, it's time to call the question. And, and frankly, I could, could go on doing mouse experiments and in vitro experiments and uh, turning out papers uh, for the rest of my career. But I think that I have a, a challenge and a responsibility to actually do the acid test. And it, it's risky because, of course, there are hundreds of targets in inflammation and immunity. And uh, I would say that uh, this is a, a worldwide effort. Uh, there's a, you mentioned vaccination in the, your first words. And indeed, uh, some very talented, creative, and courageous investigators, uh, Dr. Jan Nilsson in Malmö, Sweden, and his uh, scientific partner, P.K. Shaw in Los Angeles, are trying to vaccinate against oxidized LDL to stimulate the production of protective antibodies uh, discovered by several groups, but notably Dr. Whitstam and Steinberg in, in San Diego. Uh, that may modulate atherosclerosis. So uh, that's one avenue towards clinical application which is being explored, is uh, vaccinating against oxidized LDL. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have been involved with my scientific partner, Dr. Paul Ritker, over the last several years in designing and initiating a few clinical trials uh, which are exploring different targets in atherosclerosis. What is the main trial that you are currently running in that field? Well, uh, one trial, which is um, Paul Ritker's brainchild, is taking a page from the rheumatologists and treating individuals in secondary prevention who've already sustained myocardial infarction, uh, but who have evidence of ongoing inflammation and randomizing them to a placebo on top of all standard of care, including high dose statins mm -hmm. and low dose weekly methotrexate. And this trial was funded by our U.S. National Institutes of Health, and it is uh, enrolling its patients, and it's passed its vanguard phase. So I'm pleased to say that there are many centers in North America that are currently enrolling in this uh, very forward-looking trial. And we know that uh, methotrexate 
lowers C-reactive protein, the biomarker of inflammation, which has proven very useful for gauging the inflammatory status of our cardiovascular patients. And so we'll get an answer about whether or not treatment with methotrexate, as it can calm the inflammation in rheumatoid arthritis, may be useful in atherosclerosis as well. What is the size of these, these trials, and when do you expect uh, first uh, results? Well, of course, these are uh, double-blind, placebo-controlled trials. We won't know the results until uh, we achieve the number of events uh, needed. The uh, methotrexate trial, which is called the Cardiovascular Inflammation Reduction Trial, or CERT for short, uh, has, uh, we're targeting about four or 5,000 people in order to answer the question. What are the other pathways that you are currently uh, exploring in the field? Well, I said that I've been uh, uh, badgering my colleagues for, for decades. And in fact, back in the uh, 1980s, I started working on a cytokine family uh, known as interleukin-1, clearly a fundamental cytokine, mm -hmm. uh, given its number. And there are now dozens and dozens of cytokines, well into the 30s. Uh, and one isoform in particular we think may be very important in atherosclerosis interleukin-1 beta. Why? Because there are stimuli for the generation of active form of IL-1 beta in the atherosclerotic plaque. Mm -hmm. Cholesterol crystals, as shown by uh, Ike Lotz and Petri Kovanen's group independently, can stimulate the inflammasome, which is a supramolecular structure in the cell that converts the precursor of interleukin-1 beta to its active form. We also have recently described from my laboratory, work of Eduardo Folco, that moderate hypoxia can stimulate the production of the active form of interleukin-1 beta. And another group showed that uh, abnormal shear stress can also stimulate the inflammasome and thus lead to activation of IL-1 beta. So there's a big uh, red target on interleukin-1 beta as one of many cytokines that might be suitable for targeting in, in atherosclerosis. And indeed, there is an existing antibody, a monoclonal antibody. We're entering in cardiology there, a biologic therapy, and it targets interleukin-1 beta. And so um, Dr. Ricker and I have embarked on a study known as CANTOS mm -hmm. with this antibody. The C in CANTOS stands for canakinumab, the name of the antibody. And we've enrolled 10,000 patients worldwide in about 36 countries to test the hypothesis that uh, various doses of this anti-interleukin-1 beta antibody versus a placebo control can mitigate atherosclerotic events in patients who have survived a myocardial infarction but are in a stable phase at least a month post-MI, but have some residual inflammation brewing as gauged by having a C-reactive protein above the median, mm -hmm. despite being on high-dose statins, beta blockers, aspirin, and ACE inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers. So again, um, events are accumulating in this trial. We will get an answer about whether targeting IL-1 beta uh, is effective in preventing atherosclerotic events and whether the possible clinical benefit would outweigh any adverse effects of, of attacking an important arm in innate immunity and in host defenses. So that is also the, a trial that looks for progression of atherosclerotic disease in the field of secondary prevention. So the, the patients enrolled in the trial, they have had a major event uh, of, uh, due to coronary uh, artery disease. Yes, we're looking at recurrent uh, cardiovascular events, heart events, uh, in, in this trial as an endpoint. It's not an imaging trial, it's not a biomarker trial. Okay. And in the treatment arm, is it continuous or discontinuous treatment? Is it treatment just for a certain period? Well, the beauty of uh, this particular agent is that it can be given quarterly, once every three months, as a subcutaneous injection. And it's actually wonderful to do a clinical trial where you don't have to do a pill count. The patients come in, you check off uh, their uh, status on the report form, and you give them their uh, three monthly injection. So it's continuous for the duration of the trial, which we anticipate to be a number of years. This is great. This is just fascinating news from the field of inflammation and atherosclerosis. Peter, 
Thanks a lot for this interview. Thanks a lot for being with us today here at EAJ Today. Well, it's uh, great to be part of the European Society and to join my colleagues here in Davos once again. It's great to have you here.